Ever notice how shooting in block to block is very difficult with limited boom bang applied, and how with more bang added, it becomes easier? That's because you're not only fighting the power of the wind in your sail, you're also bending the mast top section. When you apply bang, the top section remains bent, and the more you apply, the less it will straighten up upon easing your sheet. This method is called bang sheeting, and it's a depowering technique that keeps the mast bent and the sail very flat when easing sheet. Let's start by taking a look at a sailor that refuses to use their main sheet to depower. It's important to notice the characteristics of the boat, its angle, heel, and therefore speed. Here they tried to bear away too close hauled and are met with an extreme amount of weather helm. As a result, the sailor is either pinching to stay flat or the boat's heel is changing and often rounding up above close hauled. No matter what, the sailor ends up pinching and is slow. We'll look at the quantity of bang necessary, then focus on how the sheet is eased and trimmed and the appropriate timing for each. This lesson will enable you to use bang sheeting in variable high winds to maintain consistent helm, heel, and speed. This skill is reserved for D2 settings and above, when your controls are already quite snug, yet you are still overpowered and slow. More specifically, the easing of sheet will occur in anticipation of moments where the boat will slow, for example, the onset of a gust, or as your bow impacts waves, or at the top of a swell before bearing away. Before we get started with our checklist, I want to relate easing sheet to hiking. As you learned from previous lessons in the medium wind course, a slower relative boat requires a bigger hike to promote speed and a flat boat. For that reason, it's important to separate sheeting from hiking and instead of using your torso to ease sheet, you want your sheeting arm and torso to be working independently. There are two ways to effectively ease your sheet. Each method should be practiced and perfected. The straight arm method, and the drop catch method. Let's analyze those techniques. First, let's start with the straight arm method. Step 1. Simply straighten your sheeting arm from its position up on your chest to down to your thigh. Step 2. Extend your body further down into a hike while you sheet out. Step 3. Sheet back on by pulling your arm back up to your chest. For a lot of constant fine tuning, the straight arm method is sufficient with a high level of accuracy. It can be difficult to coordinate sheeting with hiking as you'll have to train your body and arm to go in opposite directions of each other. For this we recommend a drill on land and while sailing, where on every wave impact you release your sheet hand from your chest to knee while shifting from normal to full hike. Here's how you do it. On land, practice lowering your body to a full hike and instantaneously dropping your sheet hand down to your thigh then sheet back in while still in full hike before sitting up again and repeating. Now let's take a look at the drop catch method. The benefits of this method are for quicker releases during bigger wave impacts or more substantial gusts that will be felt instantly in the helm. This technique augments the straight arm one by allowing further and immediate sheet ease when your arm length is already maxed. This technique follows a similar procedure to the strain arm method, but allows for the sheet to be eased by loosely opening the grip on the main sheet and allowing it to slide through your fingers. The ease can be controlled with your sheet arm in any position, but sheeting back on must be done with two hands. We'll take a look at trimming with two hands in just a minute. Faster release often has more impact in the unloading of the sail. This snappy technique will often be reflected in the leech as it opens abruptly, spilling power, and closes back up. We call this action a leech flick. This can help give a momentary speed boost by instantly reducing helm. 
The downside to the drop catch method is that it's hard to be accurate with the amount being eased. This may also create some hesitancy for fear of accidentally dropping it altogether. This is something that requires a lot of practice and calibration. A great drill you can do is to practice easing 6 inches, then evaluate how you did by looking at the main sheet off of the traveler. Sheet back on, then try again. Once you can easily hit 6 inches every time, then try doing it 3 inches. Be careful not to use your torso to drive sheet tension. A common mistake is to ease sheet while bringing your body inboard and trim in while leaning out. The drop catch method requires effective two-handed sheeting to bring it back on. Let's take a look at how to do that in more depth. To ensure speed of sheet recovery, using two hands in a short sequence will be more effective than one arm having to reach high. The difficulty is not accidentally steering during the process. Let's take a look at some of the key points. After easing, your first pull will be as high as you can with your sheet hand. Then with your tiller hand, grab the line between the block and your sheet hand above your knee, so the tiller extension goes forward in the boat. This helps keep the tiller in place. You should be able to pull sheet on without changing direction. Holding your tiller and sheet in one hand, you can take the slack in your sheet hand and throw it forward or onto your lap. Regrab the sheet with your sheet hand below the tiller extension and either anchor there or continue sheeting on. Let's review some common mistakes and address how to avoid them. The first one is sheeting out more than required. Ideally, you want to release the minimum amount of sheet required to keep the boat flat and on angle. The faster you keep the boat, the less you'll need to ease. In circumstances when a sheet ease was required, but delayed, the boat will slow and more sheet will be required to ease to flatten the boat later on. The goal with Vang sheeting should be to release the minimum amount in anticipation of change rather than to react to change and have to release significantly more. Another common mistake is to bear away when your sheet tension is too loose, instead of sheeting back in. See how this sailor eases too much sheet and bears away to keep the boat flat? Once eased, prioritize getting the sheet tight again. Bearing away unintentionally to a close reach to maintain power is bad VMG. The third common mistake is not using enough fang. The mass will straighten, adding a significant amount of power to the sail which does the opposite of what you're trying to achieve, which is to depower. Use a D2 Vang setting as a minimum for easing sheet. If you feel like you need to ease more than 3 inches on a regular basis, then snug up your Vang to a D3 setting or more. A great drill for Vang sheeting is to aim at something on land, slightly below close hauled, without changing direction or changing your hike. Ease and retrieve your sheet with the purpose of keeping the boat heel angle consistent. Every time you feel like the boat may heel up, ease some sheet quickly using one of the two sheeting methods, then pull it back in quickly.